Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and today we're going to be making a trough mirror to collect some sunlight to heat up some water. What a trough mirror basically is, is a curved mirror, similar to this one, shaped along a parabolic curve that focuses all the sunlight in a linear beam in one spot. Most cases people use a pipe and they'll use a mirror like this to shine it to the back side of the pipe so you get sunlight hitting the top of the pipe and then this entire surface area concentrates it to one spot which creates a lot of heat. The trough mirror we're going to be making today is not going to be using this. We're going to be making a much smaller one, but it will increase the temperature of the water in the pipe to about 160, 170 degrees, and it is a very strong way of doing it. It's a lot smaller and compact, and it is a great alternative for heating water for a swimming pool or inside your house. What I have here is a 6-inch piece of 10-foot long PVC pipe. It's very thick and rigid. It works really well for this. What we're going to be doing is ripping it in half on the table, so I've set these guides up so that this sits in there nicely whenever I go for the rip cut. That way it doesn't roll back and forth. It should be perfectly centered. It's not that hard to do. You just measure the distance that this is and then put your guides, measure from your blade. It's going to be a little different on each saw. What we're going to end up doing is cutting it so that we have a piece like this. And then we're going to be lining it like this with a mirrored surface and we're going to be making our trough mirror that way. Now, when you cut PVC, it's very important that you use a brand new sharp blade. The reason for that is anytime PVC heats up and burns, it releases a lot of very dangerous and toxic chemicals. So if you use a really sharp blade and you cut it fast, you won't have to worry about that. A little bit of abrasion from the blade is not going to be bad. What you don't want is you don't want it to sit there and just melt the plastic as it cuts. You want it to chop into it, cut it, get it done real quick, and you'll be fine. So what we're going to do, I'm going to be cutting this in half because I don't need the entire length of this for this particular project. I only need a four foot section. I went ahead and cut this about four inches longer than I need. Most miter saws will not be able to cut all the way through this, so you're going to have to rotate this and it's going to leave a rough cut on the end. But you can take care of that after you cut this in half because then a miter saw can easily chop through that. So we're going to take this shorter piece we're going to go ahead and rip this in half. Okay, so we have our cut like that. One thing I want to emphasize is that as you start to cut this, it's going to start to pinch on the blade. So when you push it in, you get about halfway, it's going to start kicking a little bit. So you want to be on the other side of there, you want to grab it very tight, never put your hands near the blade because it will jerk your hands right into it. The lower the blade is, the less chances of it really pulling it. But you want to have your hands far back and you want to, as you get towards the end of the cut, just pull it rapidly like I was telling you. The second cut's not that bad because this split causes it to just fall in half. So here we go for the second cut. For the second cut, you want to make sure that the very first cut you did is pointing straight up in the air. This will ensure that you cut it as perfectly in half as possible. You can measure this, but eyeballing it works pretty good. And there you have an instant trough to line with the mirror. You can cut these in three pieces. You measure it and just divide it by three and you'll have a more of a parabolic shape than a half circle and that'll extend the PVC. You'll actually get 30 feet of trough out of one piece of PVC pipe. The problem with that is you lose the half shape and it becomes a little bit flimsy so you usually have to back it with like a 2 by 4 or something like that. The main portion that does all this work is this back half here. So by all means, you can cut it into three pieces. Um, just again, be careful when you do this. Make sure that your blade, truthfully, it should be about a half an inch high. You just want to, just enough to get into this and there's less likelihood that it's going to pull it back. If you raise your blade all the way up, it's going to jerk this back at, as fast as that blade's going. So be very careful when you cut this, especially on the first cut. The next step with this is going to be to just clean this out as good as you can, just give it a nice wiping. It usually has a lot of dirt from the home improvement store that it sat in. And I'm going to show you something with these really quick. You're going to notice that this has a very smooth surface on the inside. What happens is when they make these, occasionally they put a rippled surface on the inside. It's just a part of the manufacturing process. Many of them have nice smooth surfaces. 
others have surfaces that end up looking like this. And you can see where we put our mirror down, it picked up every ripple in there. Now you don't want this because these will lessen your power. So what you need to do when you're in the home improvement store, stick your arm up in there, feel around and make sure that it's nice and smooth. You can definitely feel these. Um, you can even look down the tube and see. If you find one like this, just pick another one. The nice thing about these is they don't have to track the sun all day. You set them so that this end is on the west side, this end is on the east side, and as the sun moves across the sky, it just keeps the beam in the same spot. Now, before 10 in the morning and after about 4 p.m., these stop working with that, but you do get a good six hours of sunlight on these, and these will heat up a lot of hot water. When you put your adhesive film down, you want to go just short of it on the top and the bottom. That way there's no overlap for water to get under and to start releasing the seal. So you want to stop it about an eighth of an inch short there and there. So the measurement of this on the inside is, using this flexible ruler, comes out to be nine inches. This is just a nine inch by nine inch square. Actually, so this should fit in there pretty good. Now you leave the adhesive backing, uh, the protective backing, you just curl it under and then gradually work it down back and forth with your fingers. And there you go, there's the first one. Now you just repeat this over and over again. Now there is an easier way to do this, but it's not as durable, it won't last as long, but it saves you tons of time. This is an incredible, this is actually like a 95% mirror. This is a very thick material. It is not, it does not have an adhesive to it and one side has a tendency to rub off. So what we do is we clear coat the, the side that we're not gonna use, the, the side that rubs off. We have a, a, a special acrylic sealer that we put on this and it prevents it from rubbing off. This is the first half. Um, we're gonna put this aside because I'm gonna be using for this video, this, we'll call it part C mirror. And what this is gonna do, we're gonna clean this one and we're gonna line it with this. This has had the protective coating on the back, so now this is weatherproof, it won't fall apart. This stuff will last probably three years before you wanna replace it. We're gonna be using an adhesive spray to mount it to this. I'm gonna clean this one and put the adhesive spray on and then this part will be done. You can buy end caps like these, they're regular PVC end caps. This one's a lot smaller, it's not going to fit this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle cut some plexiglass and use that for my end cap to hold the pipe in place and to also seal these edges down. So what I've also done is I've drilled a one and an eighth inch hole using a paddle bit in there. This is where the pipe's gonna go. So you wanna just sandwich these together like so, clamp them down and then drill your hole. You want the hole to be, this is one half of an inch, that's where the focal length is. You can actually go up to an inch away where you have an inch there, but one and a half, or a half an inch works really well for this. Okay, so I've drilled a small pilot hole right here and I went right down into the PVC edge. It's perfectly centered and it's right in line with this. You wanna just measure a line straight down. So we're gonna put a hole on the other side. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take screws and drill it in three places, squeezing this together and that's gonna hold it in place and then your pipe sits in there. Finish the ends of these, we're gonna use uh, this part right here. This is a female into a water hose, three quarter inch to water hose adapter. And this is the male. Like that, now this is gonna take water in and then the other side is gonna have the male, it's gonna take water out. Everything correctly, you should have something that looks like this. This is galvanized pipe. I'd recommend trying to find a piece of stainless steel pipe, painting it black if you're gonna be using it inside your house. But that's pretty much it.